difficulties managing the pressure for the game coming up and the energy? How's the motivation? Uh, man, obviously, you know, a team going home down 0-2, uh, they're going to come out with a lot of energy, uh, especially a team like the Spurs, you know, who never quits. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to go in with the mindset they feel like if they just go take care of their home court, it's a series. So, you know, we obviously been here before. We know what it takes to go win on the road. Um, it's just about us, you know, playing our brand of basketball, uh, sticking to the game plan. And I think, you know, we play our brand of basketball, we'll, we'll be just fine. Ray, what's your reaction to being on all, all NBA third team? Yeah, obviously, anytime you're on an all NBA team, is you know, it's special. Um, something that, you know, you grow up as a kid, only dreaming and hoping that that could ever happen. You know? So uh, it's definitely special. Uh, not something that I take for granted. You know, being considered one of the top 15 guys in this league. You know, it's a lot of great players in this league, so it's definitely something. You talked about trying to set that standard of where teams or people are just not valuing just the score. Going out there and, and doing probably the dirty work things that not so flashy and still being, like you said, mentioning the top 15 in the league. Do you think you're, you're heading in that path? I think I'm definitely headed in the right direction. Um, and I'm not going to act like I'm the only guy that's doing that. You know, there's other guys in the league doing it as well. Um, you know, but I think it definitely headed in the right direction. Um, and just got to continue to work and continue to try to, you know, create that lane. Uh, I think, you know, it's been cool, good so far. And, but I think it's more work to be done. And so we just want to continue to get better and, you know, keep trying to, you know, just move the needle. Do you think the uh, NBA awards being announced during playoffs is more preferable to you? Or do you like the way you have to get at the end of the season? Um, I mean, I think just like any situation, there's positives and negatives to it. At this point, you know every award at this point, you know, usually. So, uh, that... You know, that's what you're accustomed to. So, you know, it's obviously the first time you'll never just say, like, oh, man, I like it the other way. Number one, you don't know yet. Uh, number two, you just, no one wants to change until they actually see that the change is good. So, you know, as of right now, obviously, we would like to know, you know, but, and then I think, you know, say if you're a foreigner, who's done in April and you want to go home and then you have to come back for an award show for a day or two, you know. I think that can get tough. So it's positives and negatives to it, but I think it'll be a great show. Um, you know, obviously with the NBA, they do a great job of things like that. And, you know, it's been produced by Dick Clark, who does an amazing job with the Academy Awards and Golden Globes and all those things. So I think it'll be a great show. Uh, it's not really something you can appreciate until it actually happens and you experience it. What do you think we learned about David West after playing with him for a season? Oh man, uh, one of the best teammates I've ever had, you know. And I mean, he's a special person. I didn't know he could pass as well as he does. I mean, he's as smart as he is, on and off the court. You know, just a brilliant person. Um, you know, someone who always has your back. Anybody on the team, he's riding for you. you know? So, I mean, it's just been great having D West here. Um, you know, and hopefully we can keep him here for as much long as we want to play. What do you remember about that 2012 series with the Spurs? Did you kind of realize back then, I guess in retrospect, that that team would be this good someday? I mean, we knew we were trending, you know, headed in the right direction. Um, to say we'd be here, I don't think you can really say that, you know with the things that we've been able to accomplish. Uh, I remember that series, we were up two to one. With a chance to close out game four, and we didn't make the plays down the stretch we needed to make it. They won that game and it was a wrap from there, you know, but, uh, you know, that series alone just gave us the confidence to keep, continue to try to move forward and get better. And, um, you know, I think that's what a lot of this, I'll start. How do you feel about Clay kind of like the one knockout on those teams? 
Because uh, it I seems think it's... like you guys always together, four of you go to All Star together, shared all the great moments. Together. Yeah, I think it's bullshit. Um, you know, when, when you look around team, what we won, 67 games or something like that? And we probably just handed teams three or four, talking the possible 70 win season. Uh, you know, I think Clay is one of our top three guys, you know, and to not be on our NBA team, uh, I think it's pretty crazy. You know, it's some, it's some guys on there at scores averaging 20 points and don't have as near as modern wins as we have. You know, so how he could be left out, I don't really understand it. Um, you know, also the way Clay can defend, you know, I, I don't understand it. But I guess they got to find some way to punish us. To, to get him on, you got to take something off, though. I mean, I don't know. Have you seen the teams? And where yeah, I've deciding? seen the teams. Um, also, what I see amongst these teams is sometimes winning isn't that important. But I, I don't know. Um, it's really not my opinion. But winning can't be that important. Trey, what does it mean to have Steve Kerr continuing to make strides and, and he'll join you guys on the road trip and just you know, to have that voice? It's amazing, um, you know, to see him doing better. Uh, you can just see it in his face, the way he's moving around, you know. Ways interacting that he's you know making strides and you know to be able to join us on the road trip is great. Uh, obviously, step in the right direction. Um, you know to have that soundboard for not only the coaching staff but for us as players as well. Um, you know to have his voice at all times, uh, not on the bench but go back to the locker room and you have his voice. You know all those things make a difference. So it's great to see him uh, just making progress and you know hopefully he can continue to head in the right direction. Depends on how Cook has been doing since these uh, playoffs. Do you feel like uh, appreciating more uh, have a KD around this, this season? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, KD being here makes things – nothing's easy in this league, but it makes it a lot um, – just lo things a lot more doable for us, you know. Um, it makes it a lot tougher on teams, you know, having KD. Uh, you know, somebody who we need a bucket we can just go to and he can, you know, manufacture offense for us. Uh, you know, it's been great throughout these playoffs and as we continue to move further along, it'll become more and more important. You know your own draft class um, by heart and every team and everybody picked ahead of you, but do you remember well the draft 10 years ago when it was KD or Odin and just... Yeah, I remember that. Um, I was just wondering, like, who would they take with the first pick? Uh, and then which team would have made the mistake? Now, it's hard to say Portland made a mistake with the injuries that Greg Gordon have. It's just had. It's just unfortunate. You know, you don't expect him to come in and think he had a knee injury, a wrist injury, another knee injury, like that, a foot injury, if I'm not mistaken. You just don't expect that coming in. So, you know, you hate to see it happen that way, but, you know, it's, I mean, we all thought Kevin was something special, you know, watching that draft and, you know, what he was doing at Texas and to see the work that he's put in, like, it just didn't happen, you know. He didn't just come in the league and, like, all right, I'm here, I'm special. Like, the work that he's put in to become the player he's become, you know, says a lot about him. Is it, you see a lot of guys come in at that spot and they can't live up to that. Is it just a matter of time for Clay to get his shot going? Yeah, I mean, his, shot will, his shots will fall. I think the most important thing is he's been locked, he's been locked in on the defensive end. You know, and I think that's that's the biggest growth, you know, that I've seen out of him. Uh, Clay used to, his shots weren't falling, and it didn't affect him on the defensive end. But the way he's locked in, it's like his shot is, isn't bothering him. And that's, you know, that's important when you're trying to win a championship because shots won't always fall, you know, but you still got to defend. And he's been just as locked in as anyone, if not more, on the defensive end, you know, throughout this run. So, you know, that's been great for us and, you know, important because, you know, obviously we're going to have him on the floor at all, you know, 40 minutes. To find another way to contribute when what he does best isn't working, you know, that's, 
says a lot about him. There's a lot of guys in this league who couldn't do that, you know. So, as, as one of the best shooters in this league, you don't see many guys who can lock in on the defensive end like he has and, you know, still contribute to a team winning the way he has. So that's been big for us. He seems to not get intimidated at all on the road shooting. I mean, the OKC game last year, game six, I mean, he's had some big games in San Antonio as well. He just yeah, I don't really know if um, if it really registers with Clay or where he is. You know, he just he's just gonna shoot. Uh, he'll heat check something like he's at home. Shots that you'll take at home, most people won't take on the road. That's not Clay. So you know, that's never a worry. Like, oh, you're going on the road and he's gonna shoot worse. Like, nah, not him. Yeah. We see Steve address the team at halftime last two games. Yeah, Mike's the coach. I mean, does it seem like there's two coaches you have, or is it all blend together? How does that all work? I mean, it's just, you know, you, at the end of the day, the one thing about Steve is when he's the head coach, if you will, um, when he's in his full role, there's still other coaches talk. You know, he gives, one thing about him is he empowers other people, you know, so it's never like it's just Steve talking anyway, you know, where, I mean, Steve will let anyone talk, from the last guy on the bench to a video guy to, you know, whoever it is, everyone has a voice. So it's not like it's just some culture shock of hearing another voice, you know, or hearing two guys talking. It's not a culture shock because that's what we're used to anyway. What's been the rebounding issue? They almost have 40 offensive rebounds in two games. Um, I mean, that's what they do. You know, that's, that's who they are. Uh, I think, you know, we have to definitely be better on the road. Um, I don't think that affected us much last game, you know. And I think a lot of those offensive rebounds, rebounds the first game came within the first half, you know. So it's uh, it's important that you know we lock in on that and take some of those, cut those down, probably in half, you know, going on the road, because uh, that's that's obviously one of their strengths, strengths and how they win games. Has said over the course of the year, you know, he took so much scrutiny from the fans when he first came here that he's developed a thicker skin. He lets things go. He controls what he can control. Uh, how do you think he'll be greeted down there? And, and do you think he just goes along with it, whatever that is? Uh, I think he'll be booed pretty badly. Um, I've definitely been in that situation before. He'll get it pretty good. Well, he'll be fine.